Hello everyone, welcome back to Blues and Bullets. Picking up where we left off last time. Well, not exactly where we left off, but we're going ahead and picking up from this scene. Also, this is streaming, I'm also live streaming this at the same time that I'm recording it. So if you hear me talking, to, uh, like, uh, saying someone, Oh hey, you uh, welcome to the stream, and stuff like that, then I'm not, uh, I'm not hallucinating. Okay, trust me. <laughs> Hey, why don't we investigate the garden gnome? Hmm. Let's see if uh, bringing the sound up to here does us any better. May have to bring it up to 20, who knows. Place has been torn apart. Okay. All right. I have to establish how Bunkerini died. Maybe the body parts can shed some light on the motive. All right. Let's see. Holy Christ! What the hell are we up against? Ooh. Whoever did this, it wasn't their first time. And if they committed any other murders like this, it's likely that the police found some of the bodies. I must remember to ask Alice. Alright. His teeth were all pulled out before he was killed. The buildup of blood inside his mouth speaks for itself. side of the corridor and ends next to the body. He was attacked in the other room and dragged to the hall. Ooh. Hmm. The evidence suggests that the events began in the lounge. How did Baccarini encounter his murderer? circular dent, as if someone had tried to hammer in a gigantic bolt, around four inches in diameter. Oh, now I remember how to search. Fingernails scratch the wood. Blood ran like 
the water. <sighs> so I'll have to go back and actually take a look at the oh. Let's take a look at the body itself. This isn't a cut, it's a tear. His hands were ripped off. Who has that kind of strength? because he'd almost pass for a tree. There's no doubt the murderer took his time. Hmm. Did it break during the struggle, or was it already broken? Hmm, who knows? Blood. Blood everywhere. What kind of person takes off a wristwatch without unfastening it? Or fastens the strap again after taking it off? Hmm. This was opened recently. of whiskey. Glass on the floor indicates the window was broken from outside. Hmm. Oh. There's something under there. How did it wind up under there? Hmm. Alright, so we've got a quick attack that happened. What is it with Italians and olives? They lap those things up like caviar. <laughs> like a true bachelor, you should have put these into soak. Hours of scraping to get them clean. Although at this stage, I don't think Baccarini's too worried about that. Yeah, I don't think he is. Four glasses. Two of water, two of wine. I've always been a whiskey man, but I know a good wine when I see one. Leftover lasagna. And it looks good. Why is it that two out of three Italian gangsters are great cooks? I'll never understand what the deal is with them in cooking. The plates and the glasses leave no room for doubt. Baccarini had company for dinner. One life's missing. The biggest one. Could have been what uh, was used to execute the job. Well, for the beginning part. Door seems to be barricaded. Shut from the inside. See if there's anything else we need to take a look at. Takes a strong man to tear that out. Or several. Hmm. Collect all the clues we can. Jam shut from the inside. Maybe between the two of us when Milton gets back. If I'm not mistaken, this door opens onto the same room as the locked door in the kitchen.
what's in here. Ooh. Was stabbed into the hand. What is that? Looks like a ritual. What was Baccarini mixed up in? Who knows? Hmm. This card looks too classy for a forger like Baccarini. Are there sufficient reasons to believe that when the murderer attacked Baccarini, there was someone else in the house? The first possibility to be ruled out is that the car belonged to Baccarini. Vermont plates. Someone drove a long way. So someone from Vermont. Cigarette case. Or B, one of the Baccarini clan. Hmm. The initials O B on a cigarette case. Vermont plates. One, it has Vermont plates. Two, it's too luxurious for a criminal of his standing. Three, the initials on the cigarette case don't match his name. The next possibility that needs to be ruled out is that the car was stolen. There should be evidence that there was someone else in the house. Dirty plates, glasses, and silverware from a dinner for two. Dirty dishes and glasses prove that Baccarini ate lasagna with one other person. Was Baccarini's guest still in the house when the murderer showed up? Hmm. A blood-stained wristwatch, the glass broken and the strap fastened. An open bottle of whiskey. What looks like the bottom of a broken glass buried in Baccarini's back. A pistol, fully loaded. A door in the kitchen, locked from the inside. It opens onto the same room as the jammed door in the corridor. The lamp, torn off its brackets and blocking the stairs. A broken whiskey glass, found in the dining room. Seems clear that Baccarini and his guest were drinking when the murderer took them by surprise. The real question is, what happened to the witness? Did they escape? Did the murderer take them? Or are they still in the house? A door in the corridor jammed shut. It opens onto the same room as the locked door in the kitchen. A door in the kitchen, locked from the inside. It opens onto the same room as one locked door could be a coincidence. Two locked doors, which open onto the same room, can't be. Either I'm completely wrong, or the witness is in that room. But I need Milton to open one of those doors. The lamp, torn off its brackets and blocking the stairs. 
hands off a broken table scratched and covered in blood two pools of blood one on either side of the dining room table the lamp torn off its breath a teaspoon stained with blood a sick altar of human flesh some kind of symbol drawn in blood hmm with a glass broken and the strap fastened. The bloodstains show that the murderer began to torture Baccarini on the dining table itself. That was where his hands were mm. torn off. As a result, his wristwatch fell to the ground. How did the body reach its current position? The trail of blood from the dining room to the hall. Baccarini's teeth were all pulled out. Mm. The lamp, torn off its brackets and blocking Baccarini, already mine his hands, was dragged into the hall, where the murderer used the brackets of the lamp to complete his macabre diorama. The murderer tore Baccarini's hands off. Baccarini's teeth were all pulled out. Hands ripped off, teeth torn out. I guess I'll have to rule out criminal intent or a personal angle. Baccarini's eyes still haven't shown up. What if I look for whatever was used to remove them? A you have that right here. Blood and some kind of sticky liquid. The mixture of sticky liquid and blood can only mean one thing. The spoon was used to remove Baccarini's eyes. The mutilations and the disappearance of his eyes suggest two possible motives. Psychopathy or cultist fanaticism. Is it some kind of symbol drawn in blood? A sick altar of human flesh. Although I don't know the origin of the symbol in the bathroom and the altar of flesh and teeth, I'd say the motive was some kind of occult religion. Possibly. The big question is, who did it? That's the pieces put together. Holy crap. Mr. Ness, can you open the door for me? What a way to give him a heart attack. <laughs> it was open. Why did you ring? I thought I should use the doorbell so I wouldn't startle you. When I came in, I pressed the doorbell and it didn't work. Well, in light of the facts, I deduced that it was your finger that wasn't working. So, what can you tell me to restore my faith in you as a detective? What is that? Not a good start. It's a camera, so Alphonse can see all this. All right, follow me. Baccarini had company for dinner. Someone from Vermont with the initials OB. Someone whose social status was a lot higher, but who was on the same side of the law. Hmm. He served lasagna, and after clearing away the dishes, they opened a bottle of whiskey in the dining room. That was when the murderer burst in on them, coming through the window which he broke with his own body weight. Baccarini, or maybe his guest, pulled a gun, but it was a waste of time. The murderer was so fast he was disarmed before he could fire. He focused his attention on Baccarini, totally ignoring the guest, and lifted him up into the air. He then threw him against the dining room table so hard that one of the glasses of whiskey was embedded in Baccarini's back. He spun around, clawing at the table, and immediately afterwards the murderer ripped off his hands. I have no idea how he did it, but all the evidence suggests he just pulled. Blood sprayed everywhere. The wristwatch fell to the ground. He 
dragged him through the corridor into the hall. He tore down the lamp, hung him from the brackets, and stabbed steel rods through his body. He skewered him on the iron bars, possibly taken from the fence outside, and pulled out his teeth one by one. Finally, he scooped out his eyes with a teaspoon. Baccarini must have been dead when the murderer went to the bathroom with his hands and his teeth. There, he arranged them to make an altar, weaving the fingers together and placing the teeth inside. Next, he painted something on the wall in blood, a symbol which I don't recognize, but which could have some kind of ritualistic significance. When he'd finished his artwork, he laughed. I don't know what he did with the eyes. You're telling me that someone did all this on with a teaspoon? More or less. And you worked all this out on your own, so just by looking? More or less. I don't know which of the two of you scares me more. Wait a second. What about the guest? Right. Come with me. The guest can only be in the locked room. Turns out Mr. Untouchable isn't infallible, but you were close. Congratulations. This must be Baccarini's office. Let's take a quick look around. All yours. Bruh. Briefcase. There's at least a million dollars here. Huh. Mm-hmm. Baccarini's? I'd be surprised. Probably his guests, and I doubt it was to pay Baccarini for his services. None of his forgeries are worth that much. Hmm. for OB, but I have to take the children to school tomorrow and I can't make the meetup. Friday, same time, same place. It's signed and I. Meetup? Mm-hmm. These initials are getting to be a pain in the ass, right? I have to take the kids to school tomorrow. I don't think this is some loving divorced daddy, Milton. Ah, I take back what I just said. And then there's these. Driver's license of one John Martinson and Osmond Burke, OB. Hmm. Do we know him? The eldest son of the richest family in Vermont, convicted rapist. He was arrested thanks to the testimony of his father, who wound up disinheriting him. He escaped from prison last week. He broke into the family home and slit the throats of all his relatives one by one, opened the safe, and got away with a fortune. So, uh, that explains like the money. All starting to add up, isn't it? Holy Help! crap. Help! Help! Fight sequence. Milton! Milton! You're doing fine on your own, Mr. Ah! I believe in you. Holy crap. Ooh, back, triple backhand. Ow. Ooh. Quite an interesting battle. Ooh, headbutt. Oh. Get out of my way, I said. He's coming back. Who's coming back? Him, the monster. The guy who 
killed Baccarini? Hey, he was a monster! Oh, get your hands off me, Negro! How is he like you? Describe him for me. He was a monster. Red and black. I mean, his head reached the ceiling. He tore off his hands with his claws! It was a monster! A monster! Should I hit him again? Yes. Oh! You're right in the bottom jaw. Right. Yeah, yeah, yes! Good. Now pay attention, Burke, because I have a question for you. Notes, documents, suitcase. Who is this money for? Uh, Nikolai Ivankov. Rings a bell. One of Capone's right hand and I. 20 years ago. What does this stuff about kids mean? I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Calm down, Burke. You were going to meet up with him, right? Yes, I uh, at the docks, uh, uh, birth 42, right, right next to where, um, where, where the uh, alleg alligator 3 is moored. So what's the meetup time? Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, at, uh, uh, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow noon, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow? No, it's going to be tonight. It's all. Uh, uh. Don't get too comfortable. We'll be there in no time. Hmm. Uh, be honest with you, it looks like he was uh, probably shaken up pretty bad. Can't say he's the sanest person in the world, but with all the bandages. You need painkillers. I hate the fact that I'm taking an interest in your health. But it's the law. I'm afraid not, Mr. Ness. I have to take him to Alphonse. Out of the question. I know his temper. He'll beat him to a pulp. Listen, if the missing girl was your granddaughter, you wouldn't forgive me if I didn't let you see the only suspect who could lead us to her. Okay. <laughs> Guess we're uh, taking them to Alphonse. Also, hello, uh, viewer one. What? How you doing tonight? Would cover up the smell of stale grease. I was wrong. <laughs> At nightfall. Elliot? Ah, Delphine. Oh, thank God you're here. The lights were off, so I thought... Oh, I'm sorry. I got out of the hospital late, then I went to the station to pick up Jim's check, and when they told me... I... I'm scared. Of what? What are you drinking? Going to be uh, truthfully honest, after uh, that, it's probably a drink. Drop of whiskey. Just a drop. Breathe on me. <sighs> you heard me. <sighs> you idiot. You frightened me just when... No! You knew! Knew about what? What's that gun doing there? Uh... Half-truth. We gotta at least uh, put some of the information together. The guy that I know is having trouble with a two-bit mafioso. He asked me to go with him, just in case. I didn't have to get it out. Well, don't. Don't start taking on the mafia. Not now. You really don't know? No, I don't know. And if you keep up the guessing games, I'll never know. He's back. Who? Him. I don't know why it still surprises me, but it's incredible that you were such a good detective, and yet you've never been able to understand people. Capone got out of jail. Where do you hear that? Chief Jenkins. Chief Jenkins? The same guy who said he was going to clean up Santa Esperanza, right? In that case, you can rest assured Capone just put on his striped pajamas, and in four minutes' time, he'll be snoring in his cell. 
Elliot, what if it's true? If he's out, what's the first thing he's going to do? Who does he hate more than anyone? That old age. He spent almost 20 years in jail. Capone's an old man. If he gets out, at most he's going to challenge me to a race to the nearest park bench. <laughs> Please, Elliot, don't joke. You're the only part of Jim's life that I have left. If you put yourself in danger, I... I'm fine. Thanks. Hmm. My hand? Just because I didn't use the gun doesn't mean we didn't run into problems. But nothing I couldn't handle. What's going on, Elliot? We're closed. Can you wait outside for a couple of minutes, Milton? Sure, of course. Uh, although, I'm sorry to say, but we're short on time. Elliot. Um... Come in, Milton, come in. Delphine, I'll tell you later. Now... I mean, we're short on time you with the case. You said you'd never treat me like that again. I'm glad I could confirm that you're okay. No, and it's none of your business. Sorry to butt in. I brought your rapist costume for the party. <laughs> Seriously, you're not... No, she's the wife of a friend who died in the line of duty, Jim Dockers. Mm. Alphonse told me about him. Your Alphonse killed him. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Ness. Although he's not the same man he was. Anyway, isn't the deal with marriage until death do us part? It's not that simple. There are other factors. Hmm. Friendship, loyalty. Delphine and I have been friends a long time, and I don't have many friends. I can't risk losing her. Right. So you like her, but you don't have the nerve. Ouch. Oh, yeah? What would you do? Women have never been one of my priorities. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> you screwed Alphaz good, didn't you? I don't think he holds it against me this far down the line. He's a new man now, right? Did you enjoy it? I'm a cop. Correction, I was a cop. You do the job you're given. End of story. I hear you. But you didn't finish the next job they gave you. Did they find those kids? No. How do I look? Like the invisible man in the movie. <laughs> no one's gonna buy it. Take it easy. Everything's going to work out fine. All right. All right. Okay. And here we are. So, everything's gonna work out fine, huh? You sure it's here? Relax. It's just a little further. Just follow me. This plan is suicidal. We're gonna die. 
I don't think so. I don't think so. And may I ask why? It's not the first time I've done a job like this. And I never was any good at getting killed. This is the first time for everything, my friend. Milton, if you go on contradicting me, you're not going to get into your role. Don't forget, while we're here, you're supposed to be at my beck and call. While we're here. We have time to look at this stuff as we're walking. Hmm. Probably best that we keep on walking. Bruh. Man, we were so close to being able to lay that guy out. Come on. Where's the fight? I paid good money for this. It sounds like the Tasmanian Devil from Looney Tunes. It's a submarine. Well, ain't that perfect. Dramatic spotlight. Okay, there's another spotlight on the inside, specifically for coming out of the entrance. That's episode one? I do have episode two, but we will do that next time. Huh. Okay.
Well, just in case, let's keep uh, keep it rolling. See if there's any extra. Oh, yep. Knew there was something extra. Back to where we were at the beginning. You know that we punish children who behave badly, don't you? <laughs> Yesterday it was Juliet who behaved badly. Do you remember? Uh -huh. She hit Junior so she would finish ahead of him in the morning race. Do you know what we did to her? <laughs> well, you got the Olympics going don't on? Don't worry. You'll find out. Is it a cult enough. or a sports club? Which do you prefer? The doll or the plush toy? Man, I'm taking the dang bear. That doll is going to get possessed by the uh, next demon that uh, ends up spawning from the underworld. Two days ago, Mickey bit Tom so he could take his food. Do you know what we did with him? Bruno says you killed him. Bruno says many things. Which do you prefer, blonde hair or brown? Ah, uh, brown's a natural color. Go for the brown. Hello there, viewer. How you doing? I'm about to cut off the stream here in a minute because uh, we're getting close to the end of episode today. one. Episode you 2 is for see. next time. Do you know what the difference is? No. Juliet and Mickey hurt their friends so that we would not punish them. You tried to escape, but you did not harm your friends. On the contrary, you tried to help Bruno, putting your own life in danger. Very few children would do that. We You've been running the statistics? <laughs> but in a different way than Juliet and Mickey. I was going to say it's opposite day, but in reality, doesn't the punishment come either way? He betrayed you to avoid being punished. I'm sorry. Which of these two drawings do you like best? Um... The right, I guess? Oh! And there goes the right arm. Or was it the left arm? Oh wait, it was the left arm. Oh, on the next episode. My father asked you to take care of me. Is this how you respect a dead man's wishes? Screw everything I say. He's Al Capone. He may not have much left. But you have something. Life's full of little twists and turns, huh? Hmm. Interesting. Now, episode two works like a DLC. I wonder how exactly uh, episode three would turn out. Shaking the high, available now. I think I have purchased it. So yeah, episode two is going to be there for the next time. But for now, this is it. Adios. Also, do we have this as a save file? Ugh. Select that save file for next time? Yeah. Okay, we're out.